Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today, I'm going to show you how to clean and cook one of these guys. Yep, bushy tail, tree rat, gray squirrel, whatever you want to call him. He's dinner. Alright, so if you got your squirrel, that was the easy part, right? It wasn't so easy for me yesterday. But uh, I did find this one out in the green swamp. Uh, decided to uh, start barking right before dark. Um, but I know that a lot of people, uh, they just don't know how to clean them. Or don't even know how to go about it. So today, that's the first part I'm going to show you. Even though YouTube may just kick me completely off monetization for showing you how to clean this guy the way that I've been taught to do it is very little blood and guts and you can once you get a little practice you can do it a squirrel in about a minute alright so I'm gonna try my best to film this because I've learned how to do it over the years in a very quick manner I'm about to slow it down I got the chess camera on the chef cam on so hopefully what you, you don't see on this cam, you'll catch on the chef cam because it, it is a, it's a process that I generally do in about a minute, but I'm going to try, like I said, to capture it on video for you. We'll see the how it comes out. The first thing I do with my squirrel, I get him over here on a hard surface and I bend his tail backwards, okay? This is the tail cut method. It's the way I was taught by my uh, grandparents. All right. I just cut right through the tail but not through the skin on the other side that is the key if you cut all the way through it you're uh, you're gonna have trouble alright and I'm slowly gonna bring that incision downward in both directions now this is way to me it's the least amount of fur on the meat but you're still gonna have to wipe that knife alright so just skinning down carefully right to his back but I'm also angling down towards his legs all right and I want to get that junction sometimes I just wipe my knife right on my shoe all right right down coming down his thighs there all right try to keep your knife clean as much as you can once you get it about like that all right and you're about done right there Alright, so we got him started right down the back. Let me uh, zoom the camera in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So, now we have him started. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring it, that flap I just cut right up under my shoe. I'm going to grab both back legs and I'm just going to pull up. Alright, and that is going to pull all the way up to his head just like that so I change the camera angle so you can see a little bit now I just grab his elbows and pull them out just like you're taking off a shirt now I'm gonna take my knife put it right under his wrist give it a little snap and cut snap cut okay I was premature on that before I cut his head I was supposed to grab him down here at the bottom but biggie we can still do it we'll grab his belly get our fingers right up under there I'm pulling the other way it's much easier if it's easier if his head's still connected all right so you can see we shot this one shotgun he's pretty done all right now we just snap him off into a clean container Alright, there's your skin, squirrel's in the bucket. Alright, so to finish uh, gutting him out, we're just going to grab right through his ribs, don't cut too hard. Very light pressure down the belly. I usually try to pull outwards just a little bit. And then I get down to the pelvis, I kind of cut through the bone. Alright, and you can see there's very little blood at all. So. I'll open up at the chest here. I'm going to grab his esophagus right at the top. 
alright that's going to expose this cavity and I'm going to take two fingers right in behind where the diaphragm is and I'll just pull out all in one motion you see there's very little blood except for a little bit of blood where you know where he got shot but we're going to go ahead and just wash this up and then I'm going to get it in the refrigerator and let him age you see there's very little blood on my hands there's very little blood involved with the process so if you use that tail cut method um, it's really going to help you out okay so all dressed out just need a little wash get ready to eat so what we're going to do next is and I would do this with all of them you can cut them up ahead of time if you want if you got a lot we just got the one we'll show you how to butcher them later but we want to age our squirrel for a week so I'm going to go ahead and stick him, stick him in to the uh, food saver go back and seal him I'll keep any uh, bacteria off of him while he's aging. And you can you can age him for as long as you'd like. I go at least a week. And I'd always give that seal a little extra time there just to make sure it it uh, maintains. But there he is. And put him in a fridge, and we'll see you in a week. So it's been a week. Our squirrel's been aging in the fridge, in the vacuum pack. I just took him out, rinsed him off a little bit. Now I'm going to show you the things you're going to need to make my favorite squirrel dish. Okay, there's Mr. Bushytail Tree Rat right there. And uh, chicken of the tree, I call him. We got some uh, vegetable oil. I got an egg. I got some of our favorite seasoning, Seminole Swamp Seasoning. If you would like to try that, uh, go check it out in the description below let them know where you where you heard about it I got some all-purpose flour I got a double uh, heaping table or one heaping tablespoon of mayo real mayo and uh, one medium sweet onion so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my wash and I'm just gonna take one egg and uh, put that right in on my mayo I'm gonna take a whisk uh, those of you who uh, subscribe and follow our channel know that uh, you, this is not the first time I've seen this we use this a lot for when we batter things it really helps your batter to adhere to your meat so much better and it just brings a lot of flavor also fairly thick slices. I'm going to use, them, use this to season our oil. So that'll be next. So today for equipment I'm going to be using the Concord double burner propane stove here. You can do this on a campfire, you can do it in the house, you can do it on whatever you got. And today I'm going to use something we haven't used in a while uh, on the show and that is our, I think they call this uh, the combo three-in-one combo it's from lodge it's either two skillets a deep and a shallow or you can invert that other one right on top and it makes a very heavy nice tight fitting lid and that's what you want so if you don't have this one uh, use you know your cast iron lid or use your Dutch oven that works really well also and what a lot of people don't know is is the Dutch oven lids actually fit most lodge skillets I'll show you that real quick so almost all these pans Dutch oven lid fits on there perfect see that so if you have a Dutch oven but you don't have a heavy lid for your uh, your uh, I think this is the number eight or the or the, I think now they just call them a 10 inch but 10 inch pan uh, fits fine um, I like this one because it's domed for frying and that's what we're going to be doing with it today so let's go ahead we got our fire going there already we're going to put about uh, half to three quarters of an inch oil in there it's probably fine right there I'm gonna go ahead and let that start uh, heating up you know I have to get crazy about this we're gonna go ahead and just dump these onions in there as that oil's coming up and we're just gonna let them uh, soften maybe brown just a little bit with the lid off 
So back over at the cutting board now, let's take our, our little chicken of the tree out of the bag here. I'm going to cut them up. Also want to make sure there's no, uh, you know, when we cut them, we want to make sure there's no pellets left inside of them. Um, I shot this one with a uh, bird shot. Cut him, took his back leg off there. All right, just cut him into pieces. Cut him right behind the front legs. Then we'll split him right down the middle. All right, and these ribs, I usually just take these ribs right on off of here. I mean, they're really, there's not much meat there. To, if you got a dog, save him for him. And there's your back, the best part, the whole squirrel. Cut that in two pieces. All right, arrange them out here on the cutting board. Like I said, I wanna make sure real quick that there's no pellets in him. All right, and we're gonna season them pretty liberally. Uh, this season will cook out. Into the rest of the dish and the gravy. I got one hair on him, not too bad. That's due to that way we skinned them. So here, just gonna toss them in the flour, give them a good dredging, roll them around in there real good. So they're all coated. Now here's the little trick with the egg wash. You shake them off, run them through that egg mayo wash, right back in the flour. All right, and we'll do that with all the pieces. Alrighty, let's go check on our onions. So when those guys start to get a little bit brown around the edges, that's where I like to stop them and man, they're nice and soft and put them right back over in our little container. That one's pretty awesome too. All right, get them golden brown on that side. How much flour is going to depend on how much oil you have. So we're going to start. We did leave all them drippings in there. Okay. But, uh, so you want to go at this easy. You can always add more oil if you get too much, um, too much flour. I want it to be pretty thick. And we want a pretty good amount of gravy too. Once it gets to that kind of a red color, when we want to go ahead you only got a small window there too pouring cold water and there goes the mower it's easier to just cook than it is to try to cook and show you what I'm cooking I can tell you that um, I'm, I'm doing this by myself so I don't 
have a production crew or even a camera person or audio guy or equipment dude, whatever, I'm, I'm it. So, get that nice and smooth now. All right, no disaster. We just had to work on a little bit more than I wanted to. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Neighbor is decided to mow his grass right when I out here trying to film for you guys. So, it's okay. I put in a little Seminole Swamp. That I put in was the regular. I don't want to make this too spicy, but it needs quite a bit of seasoning to counteract that flour. All right, so going pretty good. All right, going back in with our onions cooked earlier. All right, then I'm gonna bring over just a little bit of milk. Some people put the milk in when they first start it. I found that it sometimes it scorches it. So I always start it with water and then bring my milk or cream or whatever you're gonna put in there. So right back into that with our beautiful fried squirrel. I know a lot of you are going, oh my God, what are you doing? I could have just ate that fried squirrel just like that. Yeah, it was pretty. It is pretty. But believe me, this is going to make it awesome. All right, now we're fighting some weather coming in. And I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I'm going to give that just another little shot of water before we put the lid on and we'll put that lid on and we'll turn this fire down real real low Let's go in and check on our squirrel gravy. Starting to get really tender, but starting to thicken up also. I want to get down in there and kind of loosen it up on the bottom. All right, it's still got a ways to go, so I'm gonna go ahead now and just give it just another little shot of water. Still don't want it to get dried out. Scrape down the sides. back on. It's going to be about another 15 or 20 minutes. It's starting to get brown. Puffing up really nice. Sorry again about the mowing, but now I'm going to come in, paint them tops with a little melted butter. I think I'm going to take some of my coals out of the center. That center one looks a little browner than the rest. So let's, uh, let's adjust our fire a little bit. So we're racing this uh, storm coming in. Let's take a look at those. Wow, pretty awesome. Let's look at the bottoms. Perfect. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and pull those off. Set them over here to the side. Just leave them in the pot. So let's get uh, ready to plate this up here. I'm gonna go in here and get one of our biscuits out of the Dutch oven. Oh man, those uh, rose up really nice. Oh, nice and flaky and tender. Let's get that piece over there. All right, so let's go in for some of the squirrel. It's hot off the stove, so we have to use some hot pad to handle it there. 
and let me tell you guys wish I could put some smells up here for you let's get just the meat out front there and then some of that gravy on them biscuits it's fall apart tender you see this you just take it right off the bone just like that all right now since it's a uh, kind of breakfast time here I'm gonna go ahead right over them biscuits there's an over easy egg little sprig of some sage out of the garden and that my friends is the best way to, to eat a squirrel wow man I know you want some of that right there let's go ahead and give some of that squirrel a try just fall off the bone oh Let me tell you what, aging that squirrel in that fridge for uh, a minimum of a week, this one was in about 10 days, vacuum packed, important. Um, makes all the difference, takes, takes the gaminess out of it. Helps with the tenderization. And uh, let's try some of that biscuit with the gravy there. Oh my God. So, if you never tried cooking squirrel this way before, I know some of you guys are, this is an old Southern recipe. Taught to me uh, by the old folks, you know, back in the day. And I've eaten a lot of fried squirrel, but I tell you what, this is about fried squirrel Two times better so hope you give it a try if you like what we're doing please smash that like button right down there you can subscribe to our channel right here for another great backwards gourmet video it's gonna be right up there and for a whole playlist of dutch oven and cast iron cooking gonna be right up there we'll see you next time